Hi everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I am thrilled to be participating in the Rebecca Moore 1500 subscriber hop. And we're not only celebrating 1500 subscribers today, but we're also celebrating Rebecca's birthday. So congratulations and happy birthday to Rebecca. For this layout, I am scrap lifting one of her many beautiful layouts. This is one that she just recently posted. And as soon as I saw this, I thought I absolutely have to scrap lift this. I love the idea of using all of these small pieces of paper in the background and combining them to create a large cluster. The collection that I'm using is Brenda Walton Peppermint Twist. It's one of my favorite Christmas collections. I love the way it has not only the traditional reds and greens, but it also has some pink and also a fairly bright green. So I picked out a number of papers that were patterned, but they were similar to being solids. There was a little bit of design on some of them, but I wanted to do the same thing Rebecca did and use papers that were mainly solid. I popped up a couple of the squares on some foam just to give the background a little bit of dimension and I got that idea from Rebecca of course. I popped up the two light blue pieces of paper and also that smaller pink paper that I am putting some ATG adhesive on. So I'm tucking everything into each other and I'm using ATG adhesive to hold everything onto the background but I'm not using the larger piece of paper to attach everything down to. As you can probably see, I have a smaller piece of paper. I plan to do some mixed media on the background, so I wanted to be able to move this whole unit around. And now that I'm happy with the placement, I went back in and I further distressed some of the edges using my fingers. I'm layering a couple of pieces of paper behind the photo. And for the papers behind the photo, I'm using some papers that have a little bit more pattern on them. And then I'm using some mowed lawn distress oxide and a dauber, and I ink the edges of all those papers. And then I go in and I distress them a little bit. And then I add some foam to the back of the photo. And that way the photo will be the highest point and it'll be the most noticeable element on the page. So I piece together some of this fun foam and I'm gonna place the photo in the same place Rebecca had hers, right in the center. But I wanted to bring in just a touch of pink. There was only that one square of pink on the upper right-hand corner, and I felt that I wanted to add pink somewhere else on the layout. So I just cut a small piece of pink and I put it over on the left-hand side. Now I'm using some embellishments. The tree and some of the other embellishments that I use are from a punch out sheet that was in the center of the paper pad. I don't have a lot of embellishments to go with this paper pad, but I do have a set of chipboard. And I chose a chipboard piece that said Be Jolly, and that's going to serve as my title. And I'm also using this bird that was also from the punch out sheet. And I'm just cutting off the edge. There was a white border around the edge and Unfortunately, when I was cutting off the white border, I cut off one of the bird's legs, <laughs> but I do end up figuring out how to cover that up. Now I'm using a pencil and I'm just roughly drawing on the background where this large cluster is. And I'm going to be using those marks in a little while to add some mixed media to the background. And I'm attaching down these die cut pieces or these punch out pieces. And it was cool because the poinsettias have a different design on each side so I had to figure out which side I wanted to use and then I also inked the edges of the poinsettias with the green mode lawn distress oxide. And I'm just attaching everything down that I've selected so far. Rebecca had lots and lots of florals that were arranged around her photo and I don't have the same number of florals but I want to have quite a few embellishments that are surrounding the photo. So I'm kind of deciding how I'm going to accomplish that right now. I thought that adding this bird uh, would be a good addition and I pop it up on some foam to give it some dimension, but I do end up moving it around a little bit. Then I was thinking that I wanted to move those poinsettias down. I wanted them to 
blend with the title a little bit, make them part of the same cluster. And I do end up moving them down a little bit more from where they are right now. And that little bird foot, I kept that <laughs> attached to the page because I didn't want to lose it. But then it turned out that I tucked the bottom of the bird into the poinsettia so I didn't have to worry about it. Now I'm going to add some mixed media to the background. I am going to be very careful to make it very subtle. I don't want to go too crazy and I don't want to have the background compete with the pattern paper arrangement. So I'm just going to use a couple of different colors of pink. For this layout, I'm using some Lindy's Starburst sprays. I use saltwater taffy and cotton candy pink, and they're both some very light pink colors. And I very recently started using Lindy sprays. I really like the shimmer that they have. It's different from any of the other sprays that I've used. It's perfect for Christmas because I feel like it's a little more shimmery than some of the other products that I've used. I guess every spray is a little bit different. And I really love the way these pinks are nice and soft and they, are, they don't uh, overwhelm the layout. I add some splatters to the background and then once the layout is dry, I sprinkle some water on the background and then I use a paper towel to lift up some of the color. And I do this every time I use sprays in the background. I just love the way it adds variation to the color in the background. Then I use a baby wipe and I just clean up a couple of spots that I thought looked a little messy. The background does have some white gesso on it. I gessoed that uh, before I started the layout. So it does make it very easy to clean up anything that you don't like. Now I'm using a Vicky Booten stencil and I'm using some snow text. And this stencil has some circles that represent falling snow and it also has some snowflake shapes. So I thought just adding a little bit of this to the background would add a little bit of sparkle without adding an additional color uh, that might confuse the eye when looking at the background because there's lots of different colors in that big cluster. And snow text is something that I found in Joanne Fabric and it's not in the scrapbooking section. I'm not sure what most people use it for, but it's really, really shimmery and it I think it looks very much like snow. Once I put down the snow text, I added some white splatters. This is watered down white acrylic paint. So I sprinkle that all around the background. Then I let the entire background dry. And now I move those poinsettias further down toward the title on the right. And I started digging through a cup of florals that I have on my desk. These are all pine needles. And so I added a few to the top and a few to the bottom. And I liked the way the white looked against all those bright Christmas colors. And Rebecca had used some sequins on her layout. And recently I was cleaning out all of my loose sequins. And I found that I had these sequins, which are jelly bean soup adhesive sequins. So they already have the adhesive on the back of them, which I thought was very useful because it saved me a step. So now I'm pulling off those four pine needle branches that I had put on the layout and I'm using some Bow Bunny glitter paste. The color is called Sugar. It's just a clear sparkly paste and it adds a lot of shine to anything that you put it on. So I thought that because it's a Christmas layout, couldn't get enough sparkle on there. So I decided that this would just give the pine needles a little bit extra something. And I have found from experience that it's very important to peel up whatever you put the Bow Bunny glitter paste on before it dries because sometimes it can get glued to whatever surface you have it on. So I made sure that I picked them up and moved them. And now I'm placing them on the layout because it dries very quickly. And now I'm adding my favorite touch, which is some photo corners. I thought that it would look nice if I added a photo corner in each corner that was a different color. So I'm punching out a pink, a red, a blue, and a green photo corner, and I'm inking the edges again with the mode lawn. And then I use some ATG adhesive, and I attach each of them down to one of the corners. And I like the finishing touch that photo corners add, and I also like the way I can add additional colors into the layout by putting some photo corners on the photos.
I really liked the pine needles. I like the white against the bright colors of the pattern papers. So I am picking out a few more pine needles. These are smaller ones and I'm adding those to the page and just tucking them into a couple of different places. These smaller pine needles, these are from a die cut that is larger and it has a lot of branches on it. I'm just cutting it into smaller pieces and I like the way a variety of different sizes of pretty much any embellishment on the page helps the page look more interesting. So I mainly put the pine needles on that diagonal going from the upper left to the lower right, but I scatter a few others around as well. I like to add pearls to the photo corners, so I picked out a pearl that was the same color as each of them, and I added those onto the photo corners. And now I'm going in with some gel glue and I'm attaching down all of the pine branches and anything else that's not attached to the page. And then after everything is attached down, I thought I wanted to add a couple more sequins in a few more places. And I use red sequins and I use pink sequins and also some green ones. And I was really happy that there were different sizes. There was a small, medium, and a large, so I put all three sizes on the layout. I'm adding a little bit more distress to those rectangles and squares. I added a sparkly yellow or gold star to the top of the Christmas tree. And now I'm adding some adhesive to the back of that whole cluster and I am attaching it down to the layout and pressing it down. And then I decided I was going to add a couple of green pearls to the centers of the poinsettias and a little bit more adhesive underneath the chipboard title. There were holes punched through that chipboard piece. That's my title. And so I decided that I was going to add some brads to the chipboard piece. I looked through my stash and I found I had two matching white brads that looked like they were just the right size. And I'm just making sure that that is straight before I put the second brad in. And the photo is a photo of my younger daughter, Julia. This is just kind of a candid shot. I just caught her in this expression, this happy expression on Christmas Eve a few years ago. And although sometimes candid photos don't turn out so great, I feel that when one does work out, it's the best kind of photo because you're capturing uh, something that is genuine. So I always love it when it's a great photo. I feel like that's always so much more fun to scrapbook. I added a peppermint to the title and I add a couple more sequins. I have a few more touches to add, but I have to say that I really, really enjoyed scrap listing this layout by Rebecca. Rebecca has such an amazing sense of composition and she is just really great at designing her pages. Every layout is a masterpiece and I really love watching her channel. And once again, I wanted to say congratulations, Rebecca, and happy birthday. And I hope that everybody enjoyed watching this video. And as always, if you take a look in the description box, you will find links to all of the other scrapbookers who are following along with this hop. And I hope you'll check out their videos. I'm looking forward to it. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day and I hope to see everybody again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.